So for this guide, I'm going to go over how to trade Pokemon wirelessly for the Game Boy Advance games. And I'm going to use Leaf Green and Fire Red on my Mew Mini Plus and my Ambernick RG35XXH. I'm making this guy for Fitz AF. I said I would respond in about a week, but I'm a little bit late, so apologies for that. But yeah, technically speaking, you can do this method on the SP as well that just came out. The steps are identical, and I'll go over that very quickly. But the only two things you need are an operating system running RetroArch 1.18, and then the latest GPSP core build for RetroArch. And I only saw one comment where it wouldn't work for iOS running RetroArch 1.18. So keep that in mind, it might not work for iOS, but I've traded successfully on these two devices and with my laptop as well. Okay, as you can see, the trade went successfully. I'm connected on a hotspot on 2.4 gigahertz on my phone, and these two devices are connected to that. The reason why I'm using a hotspot is my Mi Mini Plus is very finicky when it comes to connecting to a network. But yeah, uh, I already have a guide on how to set up the Mi Mini Plus, so if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the comment and description below. And for this guide, I'm gonna go over how to do it on this handheld, the RG35XXH. This guy should work for the 35XX, the H, the Plus, and the SP, because they should all run MuOS, and we're going to be using that operating system. Because as far as I know, that's the only one that's freely available that has RetroArch 1.18. Okay, so our first step is to download the operating system. So you need any OS that runs RetroArch 1.18. And as of this recording, as far as I know, MuOS is the only one that's available for the RG35XX, H+, and it should work on the SP as well. So the official website is muos.dev. I'm going to go to the download page here. I'm going to link everything in the description and comments below, so you can just easily click on everything. And I try to provide the official pages so you don't go to some random source for these files. All right, we're going to download the muos-rg35xx-2405-beans.zip file. It's roughly 2 gigabytes. I already went and downloaded that. You're going to get a zip file. And you're going to extract it using a program like 7-zip. Now, Windows 10 should have a built-in extractor, but I just prefer 7-zip. And then when you go inside the folder, you're going to have a single image file. Now we're going to burn this image to the micro SD card. Burn may be technically incorrect here, but that comes from back in my day where we would burn CD images. All right, to do this, we're going to use a program called Rufus. Now other people recommend Bolina Etcher as well. And that program works fine, but I did see a couple of issues with Bolina Etcher for other operating systems. So that's why I prefer Rufus. I'm going to scroll down and I would highly recommend just downloading the portable version. This will just download a simple exe file that runs as is and is self-contained. So I like that. It's rufus-4.5p.exe. And then I would highly recommend putting it in a folder because it'll just create an INI file and also a folder with some log files. All right, once you do that, we're going to click on Rufus. We're going to give it permissions. And then for our micro SD card, I'm using a on micro SD card I bought from Walmart. These are not the most reliable, and I would prefer to buy a different brand, but I'm broke and I needed some extra SD cards on the cheap. It's roughly $6, so you can get a two-pack for $12. I'm going to use a simple USB to micro SD card adapter that I got with my Samsung card. And you can use whichever adapter you have on hand. Okay, once they plug it in, you can see that it pops up. You might get an error saying, hey, there's something wrong with the micro SD card. Do you want to check it out? You can safely ignore that. All right, we're going to go select our image. You have to navigate to it. This was pre-selected because this is, I don't know, my third or fourth take. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to select the image. Now, before you start, just keep in mind when you copy or burn, whatever the correct technical term is, 
when you transfer the image to the micro SD card, it erases everything. Anything that you have on there is going to be gone. So if there's anything you want to back up or keep, make sure you back that up now before doing this. We're going to hit start. And it will give a warning saying, hey, everything will be destroyed. This step will take a few minutes. For the purposes of keeping this video a little bit short, I'm just going to cut it out. But I'll mention how long it took for me. Obviously, if your computer is different, it may take a little bit more time or a little bit less time. Okay, now that's done. We can safely close Rufus. And then you can just remove the micro SD card because there will be no option to safely eject it. And just unplug it. Now we have our micro SD card that we removed from our computer and we're going to put it into the TF1 slot. Don't put it in TF2. Also, I saw a funny post where someone put it in the wrong way, but yeah, it's, it's this way. The print side down and the gold contact side up. And then we are going to turn on the console. select our device type here. This is the H, so I'm going to select H. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to select <laughs> Africa. Uh, I live in Africa now. All right, so this is going to finish the installation. Just leave this running. It's going to take a couple of minutes. You might want to do something else in this time. Okay, that took a while, but we're finally done now. You can turn it off and we're going to finish this on our computer. So go to shutdown. We're going to remove the micro SD card. And we're going to put it back into our PC. Okay, so there's that pop-up saying there's a problem with this drive. You can ignore that safely. Now, the drive shows up for me, but let's say it doesn't show up for you. You may have to do one extra step, and that is to go into disk management. And what you're going to do is you're going to scroll to your micro SD card. For the partition, you're going to assign it a drive letter. So here's my entire micro SD card. Those are Linux partitions. And this one might not have a drive letter. So when you right click on it, you can select this option here and then assign it a drive letter. And after that, you can access it from your Windows PC. All right, we're going to go into ROMs. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create a folder called Game Boy Advance. And then we're going to drop our ROM file in there. And then if you have a save file, you're going to go into the MUOS folder, go to save file. And then I believe you write the core name, which should be GPSP. And then drop the save file in there. All right, that's it. We're going to safely eject. And then we're done on the PC side. And then we'll finish up the setup on the handheld itself. Okay, so once we're back on the handheld, there's a lot of settings you can tweak. But I'm not going to go over that right now. I'm just going to go over how to connect to the network. We're going to go into configuration. Go to Wi-Fi network. Press A on this box to enable it. And we're going to press X to scan for our networks. Sometimes it may take a couple of tries. All right, so this is my hotspot. Enter the password. My hotspot password is going to be attack on Titan. Uh, 
click OK and then go to connect. Okay, we're connected now. As you can see right here, that's our IP address. You're going to write this down if this device is going to be the host. Okay, now we're going to go to Explore Content. Go to our GBA folder. Start the game. All right, now... Let me just load in first. So this is a save file I found online to experiment with. Okay. I'll lower the volume a bit. Now we're almost done here, but we need to start netplay. So we're going to hold the function button right up here. We're going to hold that and press X to bring up the RetroArch menu. So we're going to go into core options. We're going to go to the link cable connectivity and set it to Game Boy Advance wireless adapter. We're going to press B to back out. I'm going to press B to back out one more time. We're going to go into NetPlay and then we're going to go to host or we can connect. And there's no password here. Depending on the operating system, so Kariki, the default password is 44444. I'm going to start NetPlay, and then on the other handheld, you're going to connect to this device and type in the IP address, and after that, that's it. You just go here, and then you go to one of these ladies to trade or battle or whatnot, and then that's pretty much it, and that's how you connect. So if you're doing this over different networks, now that may cause some issues. So this is on the same network. I've been doing this on my home router or on my hotspot on my phone. But yeah, that's it. I hope this helps. If you guys need any more help, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try my best to clarify. I also make written guides, so that's much shorter than watching a video. I usually have a link to that in the description and comment below. If you want an audio-only guide, I usually make that too, but that takes a couple of days after the video comes out. That's going to be it. Hope this helps for Onion OS. It should be coming out in version 4.4. And that is coming out whenever the dev is finished. So don't bother them. It'll be out before you know it. <laughs> if anyone got it to work on iOS successfully, please let me know. And please let me know if there's anything specific you had to do. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I hope this guide helped. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and seeing out there. And catch you guys next time.